Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the asymmetric total synthesis of a speedophilene A. This work was published by the group of Hongbing Zai in Organic Letters in 2017. A speedophilene A belongs to the acuamylene family of alkaloids and was first isolated in 2007 by CAM from the Malayan Copia singapurensis plant. This molecule showed interesting biological activities and was able to reverse drug resistance in human KB nasopharyngeal cancer cells. Structurally, this compound is quite a difficult target due to the five connected rings, one of which bears five contiguous stereocenters. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The final cyclization could be accomplished using a nickel catalyzed reaction of a functionalized amine which could be generated from the reduction, alkylation and formulation of an azide group. This azide could be installed in the same step as a cyclization using an azetoalkoxylation reaction of a tricyclic intermediate, which in turn could be generated using a gold promoted cyclization of a functionalized indole. The chiral hydroxyl group, which guides the stereochemistry for the entire synthesis, would be generated using an asymmetric transfer hydrogenation of an alkynyl ketone, which would be installed using a palladium catalyzed coupling on the indole starting material. So let's look at the details of this synthesis. The synthesis starts with a palladium catalyzed alkenylation reaction of an alpha beta unsaturated Weinreb amide which produced the product in a 50% yield. The reaction is proposed to start with the methylation of the three position of the indole ring. Migration of the palladium group to the two position generates a tertiary carbon cation, which allows for the deprotonation of the proton at the two position to regenerate a double bond with the palladium group still bound at the two position. This binds to the alkene of the coupling partner and then undergoes reductive elimination to couple the two partners together and generate a palladium zero species. This is reoxidized by terp-butyl benzoyl peroxide to regenerate the active catalyst. The carbon-carbon double bond of the newly installed alpha-beta unsaturated ketone was then hydrogenated using hydrogen gas and palladium on carbon as a catalyst. The product of this reaction was used without purification in the next step, which was reaction with lithium trimethylsilacetylene. This produced a product with a 75% yield over two steps. In this reaction, the alkyne adds to the Weinreb amide, which forms a chelated lithium stabilized intermediate. This intermediate is stable at low temperatures and does not hydrolyze to form the ketone until aqueous workup. This prevents the reaction from undergoing over addition, which is typically seen for other carbonyl species. Taking this compound forward, the authors then carried out an asymmetric transfer hydrogenation. This reaction uses a ruthenium catalyst with a chiral tosyl d pen ligand, which reacts with formic acid and triethylamine to form the active hydride species. Due to the chiral nature of the ligand, there is only one favorable orientation for the two molecules to interact, and this allowed the chiral alcohol to be produced in a 90% yield with a 97% EE. Taking this product forward, the TMS group was deprotected using potassium carbonate in methanol. The researchers then carried out a gold promoted hydroarylation reaction. Reaction of triphenylphosphine gold chloride with silver hexafluorantimonate generates the active cationic gold species. This gold species binds to the alkyne and activates it as an electrophile, where it is attacked by the indole ring in a 6 exodig cyclization to form a new carbon carbon bond. The cationic iminium intermediate is then attacked intramolecularly by the hydroxyl group to form a bridging ether together with the proteolysis of the gold adduct to generate an exocyclic alkene. The product of this reaction was not isolated and was instead taken forward to the next reaction, which was an elimination using TMS triflate. This binds to the bridging oxygen and allows lutidine to deprotonate the molecule, forming a double bond on the six membered ring and protecting the alcohol as a silyl group. Overall, this produced a product in an 82% yield of 
from the bicyclic alkyne species. The OTMS group generated by this reaction was deprotected using PPTS to liberate the free alcohol to allow it to take part in the next reaction, which was an azido-alkoxylation. Reaction of cerium ammonium nitrate with sodium azide generates an azide radical, which is attacked by the endocyclic alkene, introducing the nitrogen necessary for the final product and leaving a radical on the tertiary carbon centre. This is further oxidised by another equivalent of cerium ammonium nitrate to generate a cation, which reacts in a similar manner to the hydroarylation reaction, which is intramolecularly attacked by the hydroxyl group to once again form a bridging ether. During the optimization of this reaction, this intermediate was isolated and successfully crystallized, which allowed the authors to confirm the stereochemistry using X-ray crystallography. However, in the optimized reaction, the conditions allowed for the deprotection of the TBS group, generating a free primary hydroxyl group on the face of the molecule anti to the bridging ether. This undergoes an intramolecular SN2 reaction to once again produce the secondary alcohol together with the formation of a new five-membered ring. Overall, this process produced the product in an 81% yield with a greater than 20 to 1 DR. The newly produced hydroxyl group was then protected as a TBS group using TBS chloride and the newly introduced azide was reduced to an amine using a Staudinger reduction. Triphenylphosphine acts as a nucleophile towards the terminal nitrogen of the azide group which cyclizes to form a four-membered ring. In a manner similar to the Wittig reaction, this ring decomposes, in this case liberating nitrogen gas and forms an aminophosphorane intermediate. This is hydrolyzed upon aqueous workup and the product was then protected with a nosyl group, producing the protected amine in a 76% yield over three steps. With this in hand, the authors then moved into a series of oxidation reactions. The first been a hydroboration oxidation reaction. Concerted addition of borane to the exocyclic double bond forms a borylated intermediate, with the boron adding to the less sterically hindered side of the double bond. Oxidative workup using sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide forms the alcohol. The hydroperoxide first attacks the boron to form a borate, and the carbon group then migrates to form a carbon oxygen bond, which generates the primary alcohol upon workup. This alcohol was not isolated and was instead directly oxidized using IBX. The alcohol attacks the iodine, making it more electrophilic and allowing for the intramolecular abstraction of a proton to form the carbonyl group in a 61% yield. This was then converted to an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde by a reaction with TBAF. Fortunately for the authors, they found that this reaction could carry out both the deprotection of the TBS group and the elimination in just one step, producing the product in a 91% yield. This aldehyde was then oxidized to a carboxylic acid using a pinic oxidation. This reaction uses chlorous acid generated from sodium chloride, which first protonates the carbonyl before then acting as a nucleophile, forming an intermediate which allows for the intramolecular abstraction of a proton together with the elimination of hypochlorous acid, which is scavenged by 2-methyl-2-butene. This carboxylic acid was converted directly to a methyl ester by a reaction with diazomethane, and the nosyl group was deprotected by a reaction of thiophenol with potassium carbonate. The newly liberated amine was first alkylated by a reaction with the brominated alkene fragment, and then formulated using a mixture of formic acid an acetic anhydride, which forms a formic anhydride in situ, which is able to react with the secondary amine, producing it in a 90% yield. With this functionality installed, all that remained was to form the final ring of the target compound. This was accomplished using an intramolecular nickel catalyzed cyclization. The nickel catalyst undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon iodine bond, which then undergoes a coupling with the alkene of the alpha-beta unsaturated ester, in a manner often seen in palladium chemistry. A significant difference, however, between nickel and palladium is the rate at which they undergo beta-hydride elimination. As nickel undergoes this reaction at a much slower rate, it allows for the formation 
of a semi-stable nickel intermediate, which could be quenched with a range of nucleophiles, which in this case was BHT, which installs a proton. It is thought that neighbouring amine groups in these reactions further stabilises the nickel-bound intermediate, which allows for this quenching to occur, in preference to beta hydride elimination. Overall, this reaction formed the target compound in a 68% yield in a 5 to 1 DR, completing the framework of a speedophilin A, leaving the Bach D protection as the final step, which was carried out using TMS triflate to produce a speedophilin A in a 92% yield. Overall, the authors produced 105 mg in a single batch. This was carried out in 22 steps. However, many of these were carried out sequentially without purification, which drastically reduces the time needed to synthesize this molecule. Overall, this was a very efficient synthesis, with lots of exciting chemistry, including gold and nickel promoted cyclizations, an elegant acetoalkoxylation reaction, and a single asymmetric reaction in the form of a transfer hydrogenation to install a stereocenter which controlled the stereochemistry for the entire synthesis. Well that's everything for this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. In the next video, we will look at the total synthesis and target identification of the Kirkusone diterpenes